Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. And today I want to talk about using the PAR paragraph formatting tool to make text look nice when you wrap it um, in Vim. So this tool is a little bit obscure. It can be a little bit hard to find. Uh, if you search for PAR, uh, or even if you search for PAR paragraph formatter or something like that, it might not be in the first page of search results. Uh, but this is the website. Um, it's nicemice.net slash PAR. Um, and as these examples show, uh, the goal of PAR is to enable you to wrap paragraphs in a way that preserves um, non-word syntax uh, that is structurally important, um, such as, for example, quote marks in an email thread, or it could be you know, comment syntax in a code file with you know, block comments. I mean, it tries to do this in a way that not only preserves that structure, but also it looks nice. Um, so it tries to avoid you know, an excessively ragged edge on the right-hand side, tries to make the lines look you know, roughly balanced and like visually pleasing. Um, so that's what it is and why you might want to use it. Um, let's look at a little demo to see it in action uh, and you can decide whether or not you think it's worth it. Um, so I, I happen to be here in a source code file um, which has some nice long comments in it that I can use to show you how par wraps compared to what a naive wrapping would look like without par. Um, so I'm going to start with this paragraph here and I'm going to join some of these lines to make them long. Um, then I'm going to create a copy of it. So now we've got two copies of this, this paragraph and we can wrap it with and without par just to see what they look like. So first of all, let's just do the vanilla way without par and, and see what result it produces. I'm going to select the range. I'm going to hit GW. Um, so that's what Vim gave us. I, I presume it's using a greedy algorithm here, um, by which I mean it probably starts on the first line, packs as many uh, words as it can into that first line. And then when it runs out of space, it starts on the next line and it proceeds greedily until the entire selection is formatted in that way. Um, now let's do this one with par. So instead of GW, I'm going to hit GQ. And you'll see that the difference is subtle, but there is a difference. Um, and I imagine what it's doing internally, it's probably using a dynamic programming algorithm because what I think it's actually doing is probably measuring the amount of white space on the right edge of each line. And it's probably squaring that amount of white space and then summing the squares. And it's trying to minimize that quantity um, using a dynamic programming algorithm. And so, the difference here is subtle in this example, but if I did more examples, you'd probably find ones where PAR produces something that is much more visually pleasing than what you get from a naive greedy algorithm. Um, it never looks worse and it often looks better. Um, and so concretely, what do we see here? We see, for example, in the, the naive version, we have a, a maximum length line, then the lines get a bit shorter and then a bit shorter still. And then we've got a sudden and abrupt jump up to our line that is once again the maximum length. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, and then we've got this kind of trailing line, which uh, I think in the literature might be called an orphan. I mean, not exactly. And an orphan is when there's just like one word left on the, the final line of a paragraph. But this line is relatively short compared to the other lines in the paragraph. If we do the same thing um, with par, you'll notice um, this, I would argue, looks better. Um, we have this run of three lines here that all have like ascending uh, length, which looks quite nice. Um, and then we have the final line in the paragraph is longer uh, than it is in the other example. And so the final line is less orphan-like. It's closer to the length of the average length of lines in the paragraph. And I'm sure that if you did count the amount of white space uh, at the end of each line, squared it and summed it, you'd find that uh, what we have here is minimum, or it's certainly less than what's, what's done in the, the example above. Um, so if you care about the way things look, then you might want to use par. If this is below your threshold of caring, then you probably don't want to go through the hassle of setting it up. Um, but now I'm going to show you uh, how I did set it up. Um, so we're going to go to Parlour, which is here. Um, and you'll see that basically what we're leveraging is Vim's format program functionality. So I'll pull up the help for that. Format program is a setting where you can give it a, an executable and some arguments. And whenever you select some text and hit GQ, Vim is going to take that selection. It's going to pipe it to the external process um, that you've defined in the format program setting. It's going to take whatever that program emits and inject it into the buffer, replacing the selection. So in this way, you can set up um, any external tool to do um, your wrapping for you or formatting in general. So um, let's see what we're doing here. Um, if we jump down 11 lines, you'll notice I'm actually using a wrapper, which I'll look at in a second. Um, but from here onwards, par and then all these uh, control characters, that's just what a normal par invocation would look like without the wrapper. I mean, because these options are so hard to read and understand, I've actually put kind of a catalog up the top where you can see um, 
I've, so I don't have to go looking at the man page every time to figure out what they do. This says what all the options that I've got there do. Now this um, setting that I've got here, I found it to work well in source code, but also in general text, you know, markdown documents and whatnot. Um, and so let's jump into the wrapper so that you can see what that does and why we want it safe par. Um, so as explained here in the comment, uh, one of the problems with par is that when you're formatting source code, um, it is not uncommon to have extremely long words in there, things like you know classes, um, and you can have quite a long run of characters without white space between them. If you exceed a certain threshold, par is actually going to error out. It's going to bail out and say, I don't know how to do this. I mean, it's going to print par error word too long. The problem with that is, is it's not printing it to standard error. It's printing it to standard out. It's actually aborting the entire process. And so when you hit GQ in Vim, instead of having nicely formatted text, you're going to see your text gets blown away and replaced with an error message. And we can't redirect that error message to DevNull to get rid of it um, because it's, it's coming out of par on the standard output. Um, and so to get around that problem, we're going to use this hack. Um, the other thing that's noted in here is that um, you can set the R option to zero to avoid this error with the overlong word, but that is even worse because while it won't print the error, it will truncate overlong words. And that, that would suck. Imagine you formatted a long paragraph um, and you didn't realize that one of your words had been truncated in order to do the wrapping, then it would, it's effectively silently garbling your text for you. So basically we want this to either work without changing the content of the text, or we want it to not change it at all. And that's what this wrapper does. Um, and it does it in a kind of hacky way, which is horrible, uh, but practical, it works. So we're basically gonna create two temporary files using make temp. And then we're gonna use T to read in whatever Vim passes us on the standard input and shove a copy of that into one of the backup files, um, into one of the temp files. The other part, it'll forward on to par. Um, it'll give par whatever arguments were passed into the wrapper and then ask par to write its output into the other temporary file. Uh, and if par worked, then it will exit with a zero exit code. And in that case, we can just emit the output from the output file and then we'll read it and stick it in the buffer for us. If par had any error at all, then we will instead read the backup and give it back to Vim. So the net effect is that Vim will either get the nicely formatted text or it will just leave things exactly as they are, which is what we want. Um, and so that's what safe par does. Um, and as you can see, we just set it up by um, setting the format program variable uh, with the wrapper and the, the other settings. So the rest of what this file does is um, it effectively teaches par about what the current text width is of the current buffer. So for example, if I look at um, the text width for this buffer, buffer it's 80 characters. Um, and if I look at the format, paragraph, uh, format program option, you'll see that it includes W80. It's basically telling par wrap to 80 characters. If the text width had been different, it would have inserted a different value there. So um, let's just quickly look at what this does. Um, whenever this file type auto command runs, uh, it will check to see if the format program has been set. If the format program has been set to something other than par, then we assume that that file type has some better tool for doing wrapping. So we're not going to mess with it. And we'll bail. We won't touch the format program. But if the format program is using par, then we're going to look at the text width and try to stick it in there. So if text width is zero, that means there's no wrapping. Um, and we have to set a text width, we have to tell par to do something. So we tell it to wrap to the maximum value that it can handle, which is 9,999. Not a very common case, um, but it's there just in case. The next thing we do is we look to see whether it's already got a W followed by a digit in the format string or the options string that it has. Because if it does, we're gonna to wanna to replace that W followed by digits with the actual text width. So that's what this line here is doing. It'll preserve the rest of the line but it'll take the W and the digits and replace them with W and text width. And if there's no uh, W followed by digits, then it's just gonna insert one at the end, W followed by the text width. Um, and then we set it locally to the buffer. And so that's how it does its magic. And we wind up with a, a format program like the one you can see at the bottom of the screen. So um, that is how to set up a new par. Hope it's been useful to you and I'll see you next time. Bye.